Hello, this is Dr. Adam J. Bach. Welcome to MHR 422, Introduction to Entrepreneurial Management. In this short audio presentation, I'm going to provide you with a quick introduction to the course. I'll talk a little bit about entrepreneurship, give you some background about myself, give you the key information about the course that you need, and identify some of the next steps that you should take. Your first question should be, what is entrepreneurship? And there are many definitions. I've provided a couple of the more famous ones for you here. Uh, the economist Schumpeter said that entrepreneurship was the process of creative destruction, uh, the development of new commodities, technologies, sources of supply, and new types of organization. Another very good definition of entrepreneurship that I like a lot is from Stevenson, the pursuit of opportunity beyond the resources you currently control. And I like that definition because it helps explain how entrepreneurs appear to do things, even though they don't start with the money or the technologies or the capabilities that might otherwise be expected. But I personally like to use an even broader definition of entrepreneurship, that Entrepreneurship involves identifying an opportunity and taking action to create change. And you're welcome to use this definition throughout the course um, as you think about what we're learning and if you choose to do the projects, for example. I think that entrepreneurship goes beyond for-profit venturing into almost every other aspect of organizational activity. And I like this definition because it helps clarify uh, that being entrepreneurial is more than just starting a venture. It's the way you think, the methods you use, and the processes that you employ. So is entrepreneurship important? Well, I think it's relatively important, and the economic research certainly suggests it's important. It's a major source of job creation in the United States and globally. It's part of what we call the dynamic economy, that the economic systems and structures, structures are not static, that there's constant change, new innovations are brought to market. Um, and in particular, entrepreneurship is the process by which innovations are brought to consumers at scale. Almost all of the great innovations that have been developed and marketed in the past hundred years happened because of the work of entrepreneurs committed to the idea that there was money to be made, but equally important that there were advantages to new technologies and ideas. I think there are also some major benefits for students in terms of your longer term career. The reality is that career paths are much more dynamic than they were 5, 10, 20, 30 years ago, and you can expect to work in many different environments. Most organizations are looking to become more innovative, and they're looking to people with an entrepreneurial mindset to help them drive innovation within the organization. And there is the fact that success can lead to wealth creation. I don't think that that's why you should choose to be entrepreneurial, and you do need to be aware of some of the limitations. But being a successful entrepreneur can be a powerful, life-affirming experience, and it also has the potential to generate wealth. There are great examples here in Wisconsin. Um, a number of Fortune 500 net worth individuals who were entrepreneurs and created very large organizations. This data goes back a bit to 2016, but you can clearly see there have been great examples of Wisconsin residents and natives who created important uh, and familiar organizations uh, and were incredibly successful because of it. But I want to emphasize this point. I believe that entrepreneurs, entrepreneurship should be undertaken for the right reasons. Most entrepreneurs do not become wealthy. That's just the hard reality, and we'll talk about this later on. Um, if you just want to make money, right, that's what you're in it for, then there are probably better options for you. Going into areas like finance or real estate um, are lower risk and have very significant potential to make money. Um, you should consider being entrepreneurial because there's something you want to accomplish. And I really like this comment from Judy Faulkner, that the work of her life was to develop software that would keep people well and help sick people get better. Uh, and she never had any personal desire to be a wealthy billionaire. And if you follow Judy Faulkner, you know that she's already committed to giving 99% of her wealth away after she dies to philanthropic purposes. Um, 
And, and that's a message I would like you to keep in mind throughout, that you should choose, that you can be entrepreneurial in many, many different contexts. But the decision to be an entrepreneur and to launch a new venture should be done for the right reasons. And in my opinion, the right reason is because there's something you want to change. So you might ask, well, Dr. Bach, why are you teaching this course? What do you actually know about this? Well, I, I think I have some background that can be helpful. Um, I have some wonderful educational experience, uh, but I also have a lot of corporate and business experience. Um, I've been a corporate strategy consultant for Monitor Company, and I had clients that included organizations like Hewlett Packard and Herman Miller and AT&T, and I continue to do consulting work, uh, including for the University of Minnesota on technology transfer and other organizations, I'm currently consulting to a gene therapy company here in Wisconsin. Um, I've facilitated a fair amount of money into angel uh, through angel investing uh, networks into early stage technology companies. Uh, that involved reading more than 2,500 business plans. I also monitor dozens of entrepreneurs and executives. I've written a number of books and papers about entrepreneurship. Um, and I've also been an entrepreneur multiple times. Um, I'm the co-founder of four different biotechnology companies, Nerides Corporation, Stratatech Corporation, Cellular Logistics, and Virtual Incision uh, Corporation. Um, the Rides and Stratatech have been acquired. Cellular Logistics and Virtual Incision are still out there raising money and propagating their technologies. So I've seen this from many different sides. I've been an entrepreneur, I've funded entrepreneurial ventures, and I study, research, and publish on entrepreneurship. And I'm hopeful that all of this experience will be useful in the program uh, and that as we progress through the course that I can perhaps bring some of that direct experience to bear. I do have one thing to say about uh, a class on entrepreneurship, which is um, while we want to make this as relevant as possible, we need to recognize that we're not here in this particular class to be entrepreneurs. Um, if you're, when you're being entrepreneurial and when you are launching a venture, there are going to be many situations where you have to make decisions without data or without enough data. But we should rely on data as much as possible. And in the class, a class about entrepreneurship, it is my expectation that you will bring data to the conversation. And you'll find that in the submissions that you complete, and in my comments uh, and feedback, you'll find that data is a very important element of learning to me. So please be prepared that although entrepreneurship can be sort of a fuzzy, nebulous activity with a lot of uncertainty, I expect that you will use data wherever and whenever possible. So here's some information about the course. First of all, everything you need is in Canvas. The entire course is laid out. Uh, everything that you need to know is there. Some guidance for you. Number one, there's a relatively consistent module schedule that you should get familiar with. There are readings and other materials, including videos and these audio presentations that you'll be expected to review. There's a variety of assignments for you to do. They include hot takes, which are just short uh, submissions in which you describe what you think, often before you've read any of the topic material. Um, there are comprehension quizzes that are mostly there to make sure you've done the readings and reviewed the videos and that you have a baseline for understanding what's going on. There are journal entries for you to complete in which you will pull in outside resources and reflect on how you think they apply to the course and your own experience. Um, there are team-based case analyses for you to complete. Uh, and then there are either exams or projects. You'll have a choice to make fairly quickly about how you want to complete the course. This course is based on autonomous learning. That is the expectation that you will drive the learning process. The structure is here and I and the TA are here as resources for you, but you are in charge of how this course develops for yourself. Let me just make a quick note on team-based casework. The case teams will be assigned randomly at the end of the first week of class. Here's what you should do to get the most out of the cases. You should work with your team to read each case at the start of the module, that is two weeks before it's due. You should then meet with your team during that first week or early in the second week to discuss the case and how you all understand it. Then I recommend working in pairs to analyze the case data and answer all of the questions. And then finally, you would re-meet with your team or have some kind of online discussion process in which you can finalize your answers and draft your case report for submission. And then I recommend participating as a team in the case discussions. Um, but 
I appreciate that that may not work for everyone. Um, that's how you'd get the most out of the cases. You can scrape by quite efficiently with minimal amount of learning. For example, you could simply assign in questions to individual team members. There are usually four questions for case and there are four people per team generally. Um, each of you could then just read the case before the day, the day before it's due and focus on just your question, answer that as best you can, and copy and paste all those answers together and submit that. And then maybe only one person or no one uh, attends the case discussion, which is optional. I believe you'll get what get out what you put into this course. And you can score pretty well on the cases with that sort of minimalist approach. Um, that's your business. It's up to you and your team what you want to get out of this. Um, the role that the TA and I will play will simply be to respond to how well your submissions reflect your understanding about the case and your learning from the course. And that's it. So based on that, you and your team will have to make decisions about how much effort really needs to go into this and how serious you are about really being able to take this knowledge and apply it into the future. You also have a major choice to make in this course, whether you're going to take the exams or whether you're going to complete the projects. The exams will test your core knowledge about course topics. Um, they're generally multiple choice exams. There are two of them, one in the midway through the course and the other towards the end of the course. Um, they're pretty straightforward. And if your goal is kind of just to do the class, get through it, I get it. You know, you have responsibilities. Maybe you're, t you, you know, this wasn't really something you wanted to take, but you need it for your certificate. I totally get that. But if you're here because you really want to be immersed in real world entrepreneurial experience, then you might consider doing the two projects. If that's of interest to you, then you should read the assignment descriptions, find a team or request a random allocation, start early and work together on the two projects. One of them is about an, is interviewing entrepreneurs and reporting what you learn. The other one is to identify an entrepreneurial venture and complete a profile using course concepts to assess that organization. You'll want to connect with me to confirm that the choices you've made about entrepreneurs to interview and the organization to profile are appropriate in the context. And this will be a process of collecting primary data and using ideas from the course to evaluate that primary data. Um, is it more work or less work? I, that's very hard to say. Um, if you're serious about it, it probably will take more time. But I think it should be obvious you're going to get a lot more out of it than if you simply took the exam. So again, this is up to you. It has to do with what you're interested in and why you're here. How do you succeed in the course? Well, right away you should review the syllabus and the course schedule. Make sure you learn the course policies, commit to following them. Plan out your time, weekly and over the term. Connect with your peers and colleagues. Don't try to do this all alone. And then think carefully about what you want to get out of the course and why. You'll succeed if you take ownership of your own learning. If you are going to sit back and be passive about how this information is provided to you, you'll probably do fine, but you're not going to get nearly as much out of it as someone who's really engaged and interested in what's going on and takes personal accountability and responsibility for their learning. What can you get out of this course? Well, you'll develop a deep understanding of entrepreneurial processes and functions. If you do the projects, you'll have direct engagement with entrepreneurs and ventures. You have the potential to build a network of high potential business colleagues, both through your colleagues in the course and potentially beyond. You'll explore your own entrepreneurial interests. That's one of the key things I hope you'll get out of this is, is this something you're interested in for the long haul? And there's probably a lot more as well. Here's the key. I don't want to turn you into an entrepreneur. That's not what I'm here for and that's not what this class is for. We're very lucky to live in an opportunity driven rather than a necessity driven entrepreneurial economy. That is most of us are not driven to entrepreneurship because we are destitute or have no other job options. So I feel like if you're going to become an entrepreneur, that should be a conscious choice. So my goals for you are to learn about entrepreneurship, to recognize that entrepreneurial skills are relevant in any context, and to exp explore your own interest for the long haul. If you get to the end of this course and you're excited and you want to be an entrepreneur, great, that's awesome, I'm happy for you. And if you get to the end of this course and you don't want to be an entrepreneur, I think that's great too. What a wonderful thing to have learned in a classroom before, for example, you go out and raise a couple million dollars and discover you hate what you're doing. So. I don't want to turn you into an entrepreneur. I want you to learn about it. And if you're interested, get immersed in it and see what you think. 
I will point out what the grading is in this course uh, in compliance with uh, School of Business policy. This course is graded on a strict curve. The information is in the syllabus. Um, you have to obtain a minimum score in order to receive a passing grade. And then you'll be you'll receive a grade based on how you compare to the distribution of scores uh, in the entire class. So here are your next steps. You should familiar, familiarize yourself with Canvas. Make sure you review the modular structure of the course, including how assignments, uh, where assignments take place and what their scheduling is. Make sure you note what the first assignments uh, are due right away and plan out your time. I think that's critical. The students who tend to perform really well have a plan and they stick to it. With that, it's time to get going. One of the key lessons about entrepreneurship is that you have to do. It's not just talking and it's not just thinking, but it's doing. And that's the way to get started. So let's quit talking and let's begin doing. And I look forward to working with you in this course.